Iggy Peck Architect by Andrea Beattie. Young Iggy is an architect. He has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother explained. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past, and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty. It stinks. But Iggy was gone. He was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples, and temples from modeling clay. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye, and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Dear Ig had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lilla Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less, and buildings ancient or new. She said in a lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour on the 95th floor, young Lilla got lost from the group. She was found two days later stu in a stuck elevator eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it was quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that, above all, one ought to avoid them, no ifs, ands, or buts. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such a terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck! Tear down that castle right now! You will not build in here, is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal How? No, ma'am, Iggy said. He lowered his head, and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. After twelve long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. And they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lilla Greer started to scream. We're trapped on here. Oh, alas, my kids, goodbye. Her eyes rolled in the back of her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound. Luckily, fainted, not dead. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what to do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Lilla's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together as one. And when she came to, Miss Lilla grew, knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were seventeen smiling young faces. Boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched to ridge, to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. It all became clear to Miss Lilla Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear, along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course he's the guy who builds towers from pie, the young, brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. <laughs>